Young kids often find going to the aquarium fun and colorful. But did you know, aquariums are more than just fish in tanks. To keep those fish healthy, you have to employ methods of chemistry such as titration. The environment and water must be tested for water pH and chemicals that are toxic to fish like ammonia, nitrates, and nitrites. In relation to acid-based titration, though, you would have to measure the pH of the water or the alkalinity, especially since the pH changes constantly throughout the day. You can maintain a certain pH in seawater habitats because of the buffer system it employs. We are going to be showing you uh, acid-based titration that also has a buffer system. But first, another real-life application of acid-based titrations. At some point in our lives, we have all been sick. We go to the pharmacy and pick up over-the-counter or prescribed medicine. We take the medicines knowing that they are perfectly safe because they were created and tested by pharmacologists using titrations. Titrations are used to accomplish the perfect mix of chemicals to benefit a patient. This may include looking at blood glucose levels for diabetics or your analysis. One drug that we are all familiar with, aspirin, is an acid with the active ingredient acetyl salicylic acid and is developed using acid-based titrations. For different strengths of the painkiller, you need a different amount of the active ingredient. So, to determine this, you use a base to neutralize the acid and control its strength. For the titration, you need an indicator to know when the neutralization is completed. For an aspirin titration, you use a phenylphthalene indicator. Alright, so, before you begin the reaction, you must first find the indicator. Which indicator best fits the reaction? To determine this, you must find the pH of the solution at equivalence. The pH of the solution at equivalence determines which indicator best fits the reaction. So, we are given that we have 25 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution of the weak acid, which is acetic acid, and we have 0.1 molar solution of the strong base sodium hydroxide. The given Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to negative 5. At equivalence, you will have equal moles of weak acid and OH. So you will have 0.0025 moles of the weak acid and 0 .025, 0 0.0025 moles of the hydroxide, which is 25 milliliters of the hydroxide. So at equivalence, you have equal moles of the acid and the base, so they neutralize each other, which means that all you have there is the conjugate base of the weak acid, which is A minus. In this case, the conjugate base is acetate. So you have 0 0.0025 moles of acetate in solution, which results in 0 0.05 molar concentration of the conjugate base. So your new reaction is the conjugate base reacts with water to form hydroxide and HA. So to find the Kb of the reaction, you must know that Kw equals the K acid times the K base, and Kw is always 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, which in this case, you have Ka 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. You divide that by the Kw, and the Kb that you get is 5.5 times 10 to the negative 10. Now, you must find the concentration of OH. You have a Kb, which equals OH minus times the HA over the conjugate base. So 5.5 times 10 to the negative 10 equals x squared because you have equal concentrations of the OH and the HA divided by 0 0.05 molar of the conjugate base, acetate. You divide by 0 0.05 molars and you get 2.78 times 10 to the negative 11 is x squared. You have to find the square root of that. So you have five, the square root of that would be 5.3 times 10 to negative 6. So the concentration of hydroxide in the solution is 5.3 times 10 to negative 6. Next, you have to find the pH. So the pH, well, you have to find the pH, but first you have to find the pOH because you have the concentration of hydroxide. So 
you find the negative log of the hydroxide concentration, which is pOH, and negative log would be 5.3 times 10 to negative 6. Negative log of that would be 5.27. The pOH is 5.27. You think we're done? Well, think again. We have to find the pH, which is the 14 minus the pOH. So the pH of this solution is 8.72. So now we know that 8.72 is the pH of the solution at equivalence. Now we must figure out which indicator best fits this. According to our chart, phenyl thaline is the best indicator because it changes color at eight, about 8.79. So we will use phenyl thaline as our indicator. Here we have a titration of an acid called acetic acid with NaOH. We have about 20, 50 milliliters of acetic acid and we have about 60 milliliters of NaOH here. Um, there's a steering rod in there along with the spark calculator that calculates the pH. Um, here is the spark. This is a drop counter. This is a drop counter that measures the volume of NaOH added. And then so you just saw our setup, but how did we do that setup? First we cleaned the beer ray thoroughly with tap water and then with NaOH. We rinse it with NaOH so that the BRA doesn't have water sticking to its insides and instead has NaOH sticking to it. This way the NaOH doesn't end up being more dissolved and thus having a more lower molarity meaning that it would require more of it to titrate the acidic acid. The tip needs to be taken care of because it might have an air bubble in it and it would be as if there's solution in it when there really isn't. And that makes it seem like more is being used to titrate the acidic acid. We fill the puree to the 0 ml mark, and then we set up the pH meter and the electrode, and then we have to clean the electrode with distilled water because we don't want the buffer solution that it was in to react with the acetic acid. And then we put the pH, we put the electrode on, we attach everything else, and we insert the stir bar, and we start getting it stirred, start letting it stir a bit, and the stir bar has to be a little bit away so it doesn't break the electrolyte, which is made of glass. And then the stirring will let the NaOH titrate the acidic uh, acid faster. The buree reading will tell you how much is left in the buree, so you have to basically subtract the initial with how much is left to see how much you added. Good. Is that good? Yeah. The pH just went to four. <laughs> Slow it down a bit. There you go. It's buffering. Wait, how many more? This is this is our oh what this is our fennel fennel whatever and that's our indicator and then at about eight it will turn pink. Pink. Oh, there's some pink coming in. Hints of pink. A few drops of pink. Slightly rising, still in buffer. This time we're supposed to get it to like...
At equivalent, it should be around 8. What kind of price now? It's, it's almost about to go up. It's almost, it's almost about to shoot. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> No, he messed it up. There you go. Now we're there. There you go. There you go. Well, there you go. Some, we had to let it go to access a little bit. We did it right. High five. Bro, well, we did something right. Wait, why is it at the second? We're right. We ran out of stuff. We ran out of stuff. We ran out of any weight, so we're done. We're done. We're done. Okay, so here we have the titration curve for our experiment. A titration curve is something is a curve that compares the pH to the amount of titrant added. The titrant would be what goes into the buree. The titrant in our case is the NaOH. On our graph here, the amount of titrant added would be on the x-axis right here and the pH would be on the y-axis which is right here. The first point on our titration curve is right here and it signals, well not signals, it signifies the pH of the acidic acid before any NaOH was added. So that would be around 3.5 maybe. The next part of our titration curve is the buffer region. This region right here is when the pH doesn't change at all, well much, and it's relatively flat. It can only occur when there's something weak, so like a strong acid and a weak base, a weak acid, strong base, or even a weak acid and a weak base. In our case, we were titrating a weak acid with a strong base, acetic acid and NaOH, uh, basically. A buffer region, this buffer region, is formed, and it's composed of a weak acid and its conjugate base. It w in our case, the conjugate base would be acetate. We don't have enough strong base yet, or NaOH, to completely neutralize the acidic acid. But part of the acidic acid was neutralized into, into acetate. So the solution will have a lot of acidic acid and a lot of acetate. In this buffer region, the concentration of H plus is not equal to the con concentration of acetate. Instead, what it means is that most of the acetate comes from the reaction between the acidic acid and the added NaOH. So we can assume that the acetate equals the amount of strong base equals the amount of strong base. The Buffer region also has the half equivalence point, which in our case would be around here somewhere. This region is where the pH equals the pKa. The pKa, if you didn't know, is basically it tells you how strong the acid is in terms of in terms of well it tells you how much the acid dissociates. And the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. On to our next part of the titration curve. We have the equivalence point. This point is right onto the steep little hill here. This steep side, right around here somewhere. The equivalence point, it, it's there, no matter if it's a strong base, strong acid, or a weak acid and a strong base. This happens when the, when the bait, when the, the solution is neutralized, so the acidic acid is now neutralized. You, you would, many people would say that, oh, it's neutralized, right? So the equivalence point would be at around, I don't know, 7? Seven? 7 is where the pH, where the solution is neutral. 
And that's what many people would think, but that's not the case. That's only the case if it's a strong base and a strong acid. But since we have a weak base and a strong weak acid and a strong base, you would not have you would not have a pH of seven. That's because if you can remember the conjugate base. The conjugate base causes the pH to rise higher than it would be higher than it would be if it was a strong base and strong acid. So in our case, the equivalence point is around maybe 9, which is correct if I'm, uh, since Kalther did her calculations and she predicted that the pH would be around 8.7 at equivalence. So we did pretty good in that area. On to our next part of the titration curve. Here we have the excess. Right here. The excess is basically the reaction has passed equivalence. There is no acidic acid left to react with. So all you have in the beaker is maybe some water and there's going to be the conjugate base and a lot of NaOH. The pH stays the same because you can't exactly change the pH just by adding more NaOH. That just increases, pH can only change if there's a change in the concentration of OH. Improvements in air analysis. We failed to record the pH in intervals after that point in time since we had assumed that we'd have a graph from the spark. Um, but our spark malfunctioned and accidentally led to our data being deleted. So we don't have the exact numbers, but we do have a graph that we took a picture of. In addition, our graph did not come out as accurate as we'd like it. Since we started out with 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid, there should only be 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar NOAH needed to neutralize the reaction. So the equivalent should be at 50 milliliters, but the titration curve shows it around 32 milliliters. One thing we could have gotten wrong is that in the beginning we let out a stream of NaOH that may not have been picked up by the drop counter. So this probably started the titration after we stabilized the actual drops. Or it is possible that the molarities we were given were in actuality higher than the usual, making the volume we needed less. It would have been much easier if we had an automated machine to, to, to drop the NOH as was needed. We were not accustomed to the equipment, so it took a little bit longer and a little bit of trial and error to stabilize the reaction. We also had time constraints in which we felt rushed in doing the project and went to finish before the bell rang, so we made some careless mistakes.